Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. In today's episode, I've selected this KNX switching actuator from Vineshare. The KNX IO512 offers 12 outputs and includes all the functions you would expect from a switching actuator, plus one feature that I really like. Let's start with the unboxing. The KNX IO512 comes in this box. Inside, you will find the switching actuator, an installation guide, and a sticker with a device certificate for ETS Secure Commissioning. Let's take a closer look at the device. On the front, we have two LEDs, one showing the mode and one showing the main status. Below that, four manual control buttons, so you can turn each output on or off directly. And of course, 12 status LEDs, one for each channel. Here is the programming button and the red programming LED right next to it. Up on the top, we get the KNX bus connector and the screw terminals for the outputs, which are fixed, not removable. And at the bottom, we have the terminals for line in neutral. The wiring of the device is straightforward. For this demo, I'm using this DIN rail where I've already installed the necessary circuit breakers, a KNX power supply, and LEDs that I'll use as loads for the switching actuator. I'll now mount the KNX IO512 on the DIN rail. It requires 6 DIN rail units. Then I'll connect the KNX bus, which is already connected to the KNX power supply. Next, I'll connect the line and neutral to the bottom terminals. And finally, the 12 red and green LEDs that I want to control. Everything is in place. So, let's power it up. I'll turn on the KNX power supply and provide line neutral to the switching actuator. As you can see, the mode and main LEDs turn green, indicating normal operation. Let's try manual control first. This can be done even without a KNX bus connection, which is very helpful for testing your installation. Of course, right now, the mode LED switch is off, indicating that there is no KNX connection. To manually control the outputs, briefly press the channel plus button. The first output is selected, and the mode LED turns orange to indicate manual mode. Then, to turn the selected output on or off, simply press the on or off button. By holding the channel plus or channel minus buttons, multiple channels can be added to or removed from the selection. This allows several channels to be switched simultaneously. To exit manual operation, press the channel plus and channel minus buttons at the same time. Now, I'll connect the KNX bus to program the actuator with ETS. To enter programming mode, you can either press the programming button, press the channel plus and off buttons together, or use the device serial number in ETS 6. This is the wireless KNX IP interface that I use in my projects instead of a KNX USB interface. I also have a full YouTube tutorial about it, so feel free to check it out. You will find the link in the description below. I'll connect it to the same KNX power supply as the switching actuator, and that's it. Now, I can program the device wirelessly over Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi network of the KNX IP interface is this one, so I'll connect to it. In ETS, the Wi-Fi interface should appear in the list of available connections. Next, I'll click on Add Device. Select Vinechel from the catalog. And add the KNX IO512. The device is secure, so I need to set a password for my project. 
By the way, check out my video about the Project Password Manager app. You will find the link in the description below. Now, I'll use my laptop's camera to scan the QR code from the sticker that comes with the device. That automatically adds the device certificate and serial number. The device has now been added, so let's take a quick look at the parameters. The parameters are pretty much what I expect from a KNX actuator. But something I didn't expect is the Test Channels tab. Here you can switch every channel on or off without even creating group addresses or linking them to the actuator's group objects. So, without further ado, let's try it. The only thing I need to do is download the individual address to the device. Of course, there is no need to press the programming button. I'll just use the serial number. That's the beauty of ETS6. The download of the individual address is complete. So now, I can switch the outputs on and off. Nice! This is a really cool way to find out which load is connected to each channel, without having to test them manually on the device. Another very useful feature is the Diagnostics page, which displays the diagnostic data directly in ETS, without having to read out group objects. Power failures of the bus and the mains voltage are shown here. And for each channel, you can check the operating time, the energy consumption, and the number of switching cycles. The display can be updated using the refresh buttons. Each output can be disabled or configured as a universal output, an on-off delay, a staircase function, or as a valve actuator. For this demo, I will configure every output as a universal output. You can give each output a custom name, enable the scene function, and set up to 16 scenes. Each output also supports a lock function. You can define how its output behaves during bus and mains power failures and how it should react when power is restored. Finally, you can enable the objects for reading the total operating time and the energy consumption for its output. The actuator supports 16 functions that can be used as timers, logic blocks, comparisons and calculations, allowing you to create complex structures. If you'd like a dedicated video about these functions, just drop a comment below. Next, I'll link my group addresses with the relevant group objects and finally download everything to the actuator. Overall, I'm really impressed with this actuator from Windchill. Being able to control the outputs directly from the parameters page is super helpful, and the diagnostics view inside DTS is a big time saver when troubleshooting. I mainly use the KNX IO512 in projects with exterior lighting, where the loads are switched through contactors. And because those contactors usually serve the same line in neutral, this device fits perfectly. But in cases where each load needs power from a different breaker, I'll go with an actuator that provides a dedicated terminal per output. If you have used this actuator before, let me know your experience in the comments. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you find my tutorials helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the upcoming content. Until then, happy KNXing! And I'll see you in the next episode.